Well, I think uh, the first of all, Treasury uh, program we thought about way back in the uh, 70s itself. Uh, there was a study team uh, under Vasagam uh, who, who was part of that INSAT team sometime. So he got exposed to the US launch vehicle system. So from there, he has proposed that uh, we should take up a semi cryogenic engine development. Okay. But unfortunately, at the time, our resources were limited. Yeah. So Professor Dhawan took a uh, view that let us first concentrate on one solid rockets that is perfect. Yeah. Then we will think about the liquid or the cryogenic system. And naturally, solid rockets uh, we have perfected to start with. Then, when an opportunity came, uh, actually, it was actually between the France and India. We were having a good cooperation because the area ranch and things like that. And CNS was part of our tours program onwards. So that uh, in one of the discussion came forward that one of the company, the Arian, uh, uh, was making the Viking engine. So that ACP. So they wanted to have a lot of transducers. This is a good work, manufacturing transducers as per the design. So they said, you manufacture and supply this transducer. We will give you training for your engineers equivalent of so many man years and so on. So we struck up one. The association was a branch of the time. And he convinced Professor Dhawan that we should accept this. And Dr. Bhutanayak also took leave. Then I think Nambidharan was identified as a leader and he was sent to France. So that program went out well. Uh, the backup team here was doing the manufacture and the front team under Nambi was doing the uh, training, the so called training and the familiarization with the Viking engine. Uh, that team has done a wonderful job. They have absorbed the entire technology, though it was not part of the contract, they have absorbed the technology like a sponge. Very well. And I, as I mentioned earlier, they, uh, the first engine was made here and we took to France and tested and was shown better than their engine. Wow. To that extent, we have done that. And that engine is a real uh, boon to us. Whether it is PSLV, GSLV, it is a uh, uh, core liquid engine. You know, in the GSLV Mark 3, there are two engines fine. In the GSLV Mark 2, there are four engines, uh, five, five engines fine. Then uh, PSLV, there's one engine. So that engine has become a really something like a backbone for our liquid pocket engine. Now, cryogenic uh, process of the does not start now. At the same time, when uh, LPC was formed uh, in the somewhere of mid 80s, uh, there was a study team under uh, uh, EVS and uh, who has uh, made a design of a, a design, conceptual design of this thing. But again, due to lack of resources, funding was not there. In 90s, after the PSL launch, we got uh, getting some extra funds and we initiated a program where some small engines were fired. It's actually using the oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, they have demonstrated about one ton. Uh, thus can be developed. Whereas we need about 12 tons at least. So that was a laboratory state type of thing. Then only this uh, Russian suggestion came. They can offer us the technology in this. So uh, we have not really wetted our hands in the cryogenic technology uh, until 2002. But the technology denial came from Russia. We said yes, uh, just like uh, the embargo, this is also another scenario. Well, we should do it ourselves. Do it. In fact, I was holding the uh, charge of the LPC at the time, and uh, we have assembled a team very quickly under uh, Jana Gandhi and so on. And then onwards, we started the design. First equivalent of a Russia engine we made. Then the test facilities were established. And in uh, 2007 itself, we have demonstrated that engine fully. Then uh, again, parallelly, we took a step to develop a high thrust engine of our own. Because the Russian engine all sudden and are very complex. The chance of failure are high. So I said nothing going, let's go for a similar design. So the C20 engine, which is now flying in the Mark III, is a product of that. Okay. That's a completely homegrown technology with our own materials. Again, you know, there are the materials. Uh, pure copper is required and uh, very complex channels has to be cut on them. We have used the technology from uh, Kari Kuri, you know, the chemical about trees to develop those pure copper and all those things. And of course, again, the manufacturer was taken up by the both and GL and so on. So the, the cryogenic technology all came in 2000 later. So at the time of the so-called spy scandal, there was no cryogenic technology in this world. Okay.
So this is mere speculation that it affected the cryogenic what development. I understand from the uh, media and all this information is that uh, it was a political game. Uh, and uh, some people uh, became victims of that. Okay. That is largely the perception now held by the company, uh, country as such, sir. But the thing is, the role of any external hands which have been talked about. Uh, it's difficult to see. Uh, one can speculate that uh, somebody is interfering, etc. But a country like India, we will not be watching silently such things. We have also our own intelligence agencies that they will capture these things. In fact, uh, uh, to tell you, uh, somebody came to me and said that uh, after Chandrayaan, uh, they wanted to again kill the ISRO's program. Okay. That's why the Deva scandal was what. Okay. But uh, it was a stupid statement because I knew that what all went behind the scene. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, one can make a statement, but unless you prove it to uh, yes, 